For those of you visiting, uh, get us on Facebook uh, to friends and family of this waiting congregation to the co-labor of the gospel, Brother Jerry, uh, to Dr. Gita, the whole city of this house. Uh, it's mighty strange. I wouldn't say it might be strange, but we just thank God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, Dr. Jeter done had already preached my sermon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we greet you in the name of the great ship of the church, yes, yes, Amen. Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. If you will turn the Bibles to an Old Testament read uh, there at Second Kings, Second Kings, the seventh chapter, and we will begin reading there at the third verse and the three of the following. Mm -hmm. Second Kings, the seventh chapter. And beginning there at verse 3, and a few other following verses. And when you have gotten there, we will read on this wise. Sounds upon your mind. Beginning at verse 3, 2 Kings to 7. And there was four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. Amen. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? Mm -hmm. If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Mm -hmm. Now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. Mm -hmm. If they save us alive, we shall live. Mm -hmm. And if they kill us, mm -hmm. we shall but die. Mm -hmm. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Mm -hmm. Right. For the Lord had made a host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots. Mm -hmm. Amen. And a noise of horses, mm -hmm. even the noise of a great host. Amen. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel has hired against <laughs> us mm -hmm. the kings of the Hittites mm -hmm. and the kings of the Egyptians mm -hmm. to come upon us. Right. Wherefore, they arose and fled in the twilight mm -hmm. and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled. <laughs> For their life. All right. Thus is the read. We want to talk from the concern in today's church with this thought a sad condition in today's church. All right. My brothers and sisters, there are many of us every Sunday sit in the sanctuary of God's house, <coughs> unrepented, unsaved, unchurched. Mm -hmm. And there will be some of us left behind. Mm -hmm. 
when Jesus our Christ called his church home after he has raptured his church. Jesus said, I will return. I will receive my church without spot. No blame. All right. In this introduction, you would think by now, long as the church has been around, All right. that she would be more efficient, more productive, more spiritual, more mature, and more committed to the work of Christ. All right. The picture we see of today's church <coughs> is far from being like the description just mentioned. All right. Have you wondered why it appears that the more God's leader teaches, preaches, devotes himself to the needs of the membership and lives as Christ requires of him the farther away the church moves from Christ mm -hmm. and joining with the world. Mm -hmm. Overall, the membership does not stay as he should. Right. Stays home more than she should. Mm -hmm. Miss attending the works of the church mm -hmm. more than she ought. Gives less to the church ministry than everything else. She loves less than she should, causes more trouble than any other place, complains and finds fault more than any other gathering, gets upset quicker than any other city. It seems. There is too little to no loyalty to Christ. All right. Because we are more bent to a less committed on doing what is required as God commands. Today's church can be seen in dear John as if she's lifeless. All right. Hard is strength. Powerless. Crippled, sick, dying. Right. And the very cause of her condition is a very important fact. Light of leadership is not properly in place. For the most part, there is no policing the poor people. Apostle Paul even said, to those governing the local officials, politicians. Right. They police as ministers of God. Mm -hmm. And I heard it once said, we must be, as a body of Christ, a ministry of presence. Right. The reason for the sermon is to help raise the mind. To awake to a sense of conscience. To make better decisions in this life-threatening condition. All right. Why does it appear she's sad and sick? There are two thoughts we want to attempt to live from this text. All right. First, the condition of today's church is religiously hindered. Right. Secondly, the condition of today's church is repentantly hopeful. Ain't that all right? All right. It's imperative we take note. <clears throat> and there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. Religion, my brothers and sisters, is a way of life mm. devised by the mind of man. Yes, 
Yeah. It does nothing for preparing the heart of man for heaven. Religion at its best is like these four lepers, afflicted with a condition that grows worse with time. The word leprous describes the condition of these four lepers with a very bad skin disease All right. that will contaminate the house and those therein. A contagious disease within the community. This would be caused, this would cause for one to be put out, put down, excluded, segregated, and to be ostracized. All right. This condition tells us why many today's congregations has lost their feeling. Their strength, their, they have lost, they seem to be that they have lost their service to be of no effect. No vision. And any potential pastor cannot give no vision to the church unless he see He has given an overall assessment. To see if the church is like it. All right. In a matter of walking with me. All right. Amen. And to see if she's mission minded mm -hmm. for outreach ministry. All right. And what is the church mission? She's hindered because as it relates to being healthy or mature. She demonstrates having little strength and no power. She is sick. People coming to worship, coming to praise God, coming to serve. To walk the leaves in worse condition before coming. She is sick. There is too little knowledge of God not being taught because she leans on the medicines of the streets right. with drugs and alcohol, mm -hmm. tobacco, profanity, mm -hmm. and pornography. All right, preach it. Revealing herself in the house of folk, cheating and stealing for the good of God in their sin and sickness. Mm -hmm. Ain't that all right? All right. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Holy Spirit is our third. And God, your whole Rapha, say, I am your help. All right. That heals spirit, soul, and body. Yeah. To want them, our prayers go unfilled because she is sick. Amen. The money she's obligated to give to the Lord to maintain and to satisfy her. Her every need often goes unpaid for lack of gain because she is sick. In a state of today's church, she's starving. And when you carefully read the text, the sixth chapter of Second Kings will tell you about the starvation and the famine within the land. Amen. In the state of today's church, she's starving in a famine. She's dying. There is a great lack of acceptance, support, love, lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, biblical and sound doctrine, preaching, a lack of genuine relationship among the body of Christ. Because what you will discover, there is too little of thanksgiving and kindness not being shown. Mm -hmm. And there are many in church positions has very little spiritual growth, All right. spiritual knowledge, spiritual understanding, as little concern for the fellowship within the church. 
We see too much negative greed, mm -hmm. envy, Amen. jealousy mm -hmm. among the clergy, right. <laughs> hatred, hypocrisy, laziness, mm -hmm. unwilling to put aside mm -hmm. selfish practice. All right. My brothers and sisters, what's even more, more saying is nobody seems to understand to want to do this thing right. It's no one. She's starving right. for physical and for the spiritual need. She is dying. Right. When the church stops giving birth, what are you saying, preacher? The church is a living organism. Amen. She produces and producing the reap. Produce for the good and love of Christ. That's it. When the church stops giving birth, it is a sad thing today. It is a sign of slow death because she lacks commitment to God. Not too many whose names are on the church road. Right. In the midst of her starvation, the church cannot help but be pleased on the critical list in the intensive care. <laughs> because she's dying. All right. I'm trying to tell the story of the present day. All right. When the church follows the practice of putting in place human devised activities, and call it in ministry. All right. What are you saying, preacher? Come on, somebody. Can I get a witness? All right. Talk to me. <laughs> Life of the church cannot be obtained, sustained, right. nor extended without the direct activity of the Holy Spirit in dwelling. What constitutes true ministry in today's church is sitting idle long as we're coming for rehearsals, practices. This is the work in preparation for ministry, but I beg to differ. Ministry occurs when we are serving of us. All right. Minister occurs when we serve others at the time God commands. When we are under the influence and persuaded by the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Anything done outside from the true teachings from the word of God is not ministry. All right. Come on somebody. All right. When ministry meets his requirements, God that is, it must meet legitimate needs and in accord with the teachings of Scripture. And led by the Holy Spirit. If we take an inventory of the works done by the average church today, congregation, we will discover that the majority of the works that we are doing comes out of the world. Furthermore, look at the average church today and ask yourself the question. Does the church look like the church Jesus left? Listen to the music we render in church. And then ask yourself, is it reminding you of God or the Word? Amen. Look Amen. at the church Amen. today. Amen. Are they providing to me? Are the prayers genuine? Right. And conscience continue to ask the question. Amen. Does the teaching line up with the scripture? Amen. Does the sermons preach? Line up with the word of God. Are they replacing theology with the one 
down to that loop, I be loyalty. Did I say so? Or did I come too deep? Or did I say something to be young? All right. You understand that you come in and then father engage in selling, begging, tactics used for receiving their finances. All right. And the other on biblical means from the word. All right. Preach it. The church is to not to seek any assistance from the world. They are sending a bad message to God that our God is not a is a poor reflection on God that he's Jehovah Jireh. The one who provides for every need. Ain't God alright? Right. Before we move any farther from this truth, we need to labor here for just a brief moment. All right. Listen to this special revelation the Holy Spirit shared with me. First, we need to make known Proverbs 13 chapter informs me wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. All right. When the church seeks any assistance outside from the church, All right. she's in violation of God and God's word. All right. What is the command on how should we support the church today in our giving of tithes, offerings, and pledges only? All right. Jesus said, now if you're wondering that if, if I pay my tithe, now you can check it out. I pay my tithe. I pay them. I don't pay them today. <laughs> and I give them offering like I should. All right. Amen. That's the way the church has to be supported Amen. and be taken care of. Amen. No other way. All right. Jesus practiced what the Jewish law required. Amen. Jesus said, but check this out. What Jesus said, what Moses and the prophets have said, said you it. obey. <laughs> <laughs> now who's going to argue with that? Mm -hmm. If the word of God said, who's going to argue? And Jesus come to say it, who's going to argue with it? Right. An unbeliever? An unsaved person? Who's going to argue with it? And no one is fussy. We're talking about the word of God. <laughs> My wife talks about me all the time. Why you got to sit up there and fuck? <laughs> she don't know. When Jesus, <laughs> when Jesus ministered on this earth two, over two thousand years ago, mm -hmm. the church had not yet manifested. All right, came into being. Nor was the writings of the biblical text complete. All right, yes, sir, yes, sir. and they used. This verse, many church or congregations or pastors will use this verse out of context right. to justify their reasoning for not paying tithe. Right. Yes, yes, yes. Apostle Paul told the church, All right. gave an order to Galatia, and even so do you first, Corinth. Paul wanted to see a strong, tangible evidence to the commitment of Christ in the unity of the church. Amen. The church leaders in Jerusalem needed support for the poor saints that a special offering collection was taken up for the church. Ties was not done away with. The church today is still all 
would get it to pay her time. Every time that you and I receive a paycheck, yes, sir, yes, yes, yes. 10% off the top should be given to the church. Because why? It's God's money to operate the body of Christ for the kingdom of God here on earth. Apostle Paul gave an instruction. And this was not for the church to stop paying tithes, my brothers and sisters, but to give a special offering to help in support of the church there at Jerusalem. All right. In 1 Corinthians 16 chapter yes, sir, yes, sir. 7, upon the first day oh, of the week, let every one of you yes, lay by him, lay aside in the store, All right. as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Then when I send to bring your liberality to Jerusalem. We have shared and tried to give you overall view and an outlook of today's church. It's great. But I've done staying for too long before your presence now. I must hasten to say today's church can do something. All right. Amen. Sitting around doing nothing should not be the path today's church should take. All right. When these four lepers sat outside at the entrance gate because they were saddened and sick as if they were lifeless and they ponder the thought one to another as if they were lifeless and they ponder the thought one to another. Why sit we here until we die? Their minds became moved, their spirit became alive, their soul was moved. The church today need to be moved in the spirit of Christ Amen. in the direction of hope. He's seeking God for forgiveness and reviving us again. All right. Oh Lord, but ain't he all right? Yes, yes, yes. Create in us a clean heart. Yes. Renew a right spirit within us. Yes. Today's church needs to relook and re-examine herself. Right. Like these four lepers. Get off your two nanny <laughs> in search. Do what is within her power and leave the rest to God. Amen. The fact of the matter, we must pray, we must repent, we must go forth and witness evangelize. We must minister. We must give. We must teach the word of God proper and effectively. Amen. We must sing, sign, pray. Right. We must love for the good of humanity. Right. God will do the delivering. Forgiving, healing, maturing, he will pour out his blessing. That is to say, he will multiply her with increase. All right. Because Acts, the second chapter, tells us, and they, the church, continuing daily with one accord in the temple. And breaking the bread from house to house. Uh -huh. And singing this all hearts. Praising God. 
And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. May the good Lord bless you. Amen. May he keep you in his care. May his joy ever bring you peace. Amen. Pray with me. Father in heaven, I join. Truly we come to another again of gathering the spirit. Lord, we ask truly your blessings upon what we have experienced. Lord, what our ears have heard and what our eyes have seen. And Lord, we thank you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Lord, we ask you to turn your blessings not only upon this congregation, but the congregation that served you truly in heart, and then upon the leadership of this congregation. We pray and ask it of you. In Jesus' name, amen.